In this lesson, I'll introduce you to an alternative syntax for rendering multiple child elements within a parent element. So for the third argument of a create element method call, instead of passing in the arguments sequentially, technically speaking as sequential arguments to the method, we can instead wrap the children in an array. So for example, I can wrap list item one and list item two within an array. So now I have technically a single argument for the third argument of my create element method, but that argument is an array that can store any number of children, right? And if I save this, you'll notice nothing changes on the right-hand side after the page refreshes. And if I take a look at my console, or rather my, my elements inspector, we'll see that we have our unordered list, we have our two list items, nothing has changed. Now, when we go to our console, we're going to see an interesting message. We're going to see that familiar message that we saw whenever we were using map earlier in the course to iterate over an array of items and generate JSX for each. React is going to tell us that every child in a list should have a unique key prop. And the reason React is giving you this warning is because it needs a unique identifier to uh, discriminate or distinguish these elements from each other. Okay, so imagine a scenario right here uh, where these two list items were functionally the exact same. Obviously, we can sort of tell the differences between them in the sense that one has a uh, child text of sushi and one has a child text of steak. But imagine, for example, that we had a list item like this one that was sushi, right? So now these are two distinct independent React elements. They are functionally equal, but they are not literally equal, right? They're two distinct objects in memory. They just happen to both represent a list item with a class of red list item with a text of steak. And the problem for React is when it is uh, comparing the virtual DOM with the real DOM, and let's say these elements, for example, swap order, like the list item one is first, then list item two, and now the order of them is reversed, so list item two comes first, React can't tell that things have changed because they look completely identical to React uh, for the purposes of its different uh, 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 algorithm, right? So when React asks us for a key, it's basically asking us for a unique identifier that it can use in situations like this so it can distinguish elements that look very similar to one another. So the way that we can solve this problem in the uh, terminal or in the console is by giving each element its own key prop. So here, for example, I can do a key value and I can set that to something like one. It, it really doesn't matter what the value is as long as it is different from the key property value in the next element. So here I can do something like key two and you'll notice when the page refreshes, the error will go away. Once again, it doesn't matter what the key is. So here I can do a key like the string of A and here I can do a key like a string of Z. And usually in React, we're gonna provide something unique from the actual content itself, like an ID or like a string. Uh, but in this case, they're just arbitrarily manually provided by us. But the error goes away because React has a unique identifier now. It has some unique point of distinction here that it can use to figure out that list item one is different from list item two in the virtual DOM, which allows it to then compare that virtual DOM to the real DOM and figure out if something has swapped or changed or updated at CSS, et cetera, right? So the reason we need a key is so the React diffing algorithm can figure out how these things are different. It needs something that it can use as kind of a stable identifier uh, to keep track of. But the key takeaway from this lesson ultimately is that we can provide an array as the third argument to create element. That's another way that we can uh, render multiple children, multiple children React elements within a parent React element. And all this goes to show the themes that we've been talking about throughout this entire section. If we started out with a simple HTML page like this with a div, uh, with an ID of root, using JavaScript, whether it is vanilla, uh, JavaScript in the browser or React, we have all the tools at our disposal to be able to create a complete interface. Now, this is obviously a very simple example with three HTML elements, but in theory, right, we could write a thousand different calls to create element, to create a thousand different uh, React elements representing eventual DOM nodes, and we could build a full user interface uh, using this thing, right? I'm not advocating that that's a good thing or a desirable thing, because obviously this is very verbose. The point is to prove to you that it is possible to build the entire interface using JavaScript. And as we're already starting to see, it can be pretty laborious and verbose for the developers. The, but create element is sort of the foundation upon which everything is built. And the next lesson, we're gonna explore how JSX basically helps us solve this problem by giving us the illusion of HTML, 
but really being fundamentally create element function calls under the hood. This is all that React is within the library. It's just a bunch of JavaScript functions or methods that create these React elements that keep uh, track of internal props that represent an eventual HTML element that will be added. We could do all of this with vanilla JavaScript. We don't need JSX, but the reason JSX is super beneficial is to remove the complexity and the super complex verbose nature of all of these create element calls, especially with, when dealing with UIs that obviously have hundreds or thousands of different HTML elements. So in the next lesson, we're gonna tie all these pieces together and show again how JSX helps us tackle this verbose problem. So I'll see you there.